and welcome to NTD China News. I'm Karen Chang. Making headlines this Tuesday, January 8th. Who is China state media blaming for the growing anti-censorship protest? The Chinese regime retracts report it would abolish its labor camp system. And an activist disappears into secret detention, now legal under Chinese law. First today, the censorship debate in southern Guangdong province. The wave of support for Southern Weekly has intensified, and while the Chinese regime has not officially responded, a state-run media has blamed hostile foreign forces for fueling the anti-censorship protest. After Southern Weekly exposed the meddling of Guangdong's propaganda chief in their newspaper, Chinese citizens began to protest. In a rare display of tolerance, the Chinese regime let the protests happen. Now, however, it appears they are starting to clamp down. According to China Digital Times, a website operated by students at the University of California, China's Central Propaganda Department issued this notice to media outlets around the country on Monday. After asserting that the Communist Party must control the media, the director blames, quote, external hostile forces for escalating the tension. The directive then orders media outlets to repost this editorial by state-run Global Times. The article claims free media cannot exist under China's current political climate and again points to overseas forces for fanning the protest. The piece has been derided online. Some news portals did repost it, but with a clear disclaimer that the views are not their own. Outside the headquarters of the Southern Media Group on Tuesday, supporters have continued to gather for a second day. This man in a wheelchair holds a sign that reads, Support Southern Weekly. No more censorship. Give me back my freedom of speech. A minor scuffle broke out between these demonstrators and this smaller group. They're here to support the Communist Party and, quote, the crackdown of traitor media. Officially, Chinese leaders have not responded to the incident. It's the first major test for new party chief Xi Jinping. He will have to balance the strong desire from the Communist Party to maintain the status quo and a public that is increasingly demanding change. For more than 50 years, the Chinese regime has used the labor re-education system to punish petty criminals as well as political dissidents. On Monday, state-run media created a brief moment of excitement when CCTV unofficially announced the system would be scrapped this year. But the optimism didn't last long. Those reports were pulled without explanation. Chinese state-run media have recently done a backflip over the country's re-education system dashing hopes that the controversial labor camps will be abolished anytime soon. On its official microblog site on Monday, CCTV reported that Meng Jianzhu, China's security chief, has proposed the closure of the re-education through labor system by the end of this year. The announcement was then reported by other Chinese media as well. Shortly afterward, however, state-run Xinhua News Agency reported that the system would only be put through reform. CCTV's initial announcement was removed without explanation. The whole system is aborted. That will be a, a great thing to see uh, because this is one of the most effective ways uh, for the Communist Party to uh, suppress people. However, we are not sure if the um, Communist Party will come up some some other substitutes, like uh, just to rename it to, like, to a different organization and then to resume the same functions. Xinhua did not outline what kind of reform would be carried out. The article only mentioned some of the shortcomings of the labor camp system, like the arbitrary powers used to force people into the system. Currently, a person can be forced into labor re-education for up to four years without a trial. Accounts of torture and abuse are also common from Chinese forced labor camps. Increased awareness has led to mounting calls for the Chinese regime to abolish the system altogether. The Chinese regime created the labor camp system in the 1950s. Xinhua reports the country currently has 350 labor camps, holding around 160,000 inmates. Human rights groups, however, estimate the number to be anywhere from at least 200,000 people to as many as 2 million. Proposals to reform the system will be considered by the National People's Congress in March. The Congress is the Chinese regime's parliament, widely considered a rubber-stamp Congress. 
A Chinese activist has disappeared into secret detention, which is now legal under newly reformed laws. Zhu Chengzhi has been in prison since August, accused of state subversion. His lawyer told Reuters on Monday that authorities notified him last Friday that Zhu has been moved to an undisclosed location. Under Article 73 of China's Criminal Procedure Law, security forces can now detain someone indefinitely if they are deemed a threat to state power. The family must be notified within 24 hours of the detention, but not told the location. Zhu's wife said on Monday that authorities told her he was being moved to a hotel, but did not know where. Zhu Chengzhi took photos after his friend Li Wang Yang supposedly hanged himself in his hospital room last June. Li was a political prisoner from the 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. Authorities claimed he committed suicide, but many believed otherwise. Zhu circulated the photos online, calling for an investigation into Li's death. Zhu's lawyer now says he would continue to press for his whereabouts in order to discuss his defense. From Monday to Tuesday, four Chinese ships spent 13 hours in waters near the disputed Diaoyu or Senkaku Islands. Today, the Japanese Deputy Foreign Minister summoned the Chinese ambassador to Japan to file a complaint. He said it was a clear violation of Japanese territorial rights and demanded not to happen again. In response, Chen Yonghua said he would pass on the message, but in Chinese state media, the message was more defiant. Foreign Ministry spokesman Hong Lei denied Tuesday that China was being provocative. He said the islands belonged to China and that the Chinese government had launched a complaint back. The disputed islands are believed to sit atop vast reserves of natural oil and gas. Tensions have escalated in recent months when Japan bought the islands from its Japanese owners. China, Japan and Taiwan all claim ownership of the islands. No diplomatic resolution has been made and currently the islands are under Japanese control. And coming up after the break, why the son of former Chinese Premier Li Peng is in hot waters, smog in China blamed for excessive premature deaths, and an icy appearance for a Korean pop icon in northern China. And welcome back. Authorities in China's Shanxi province are taking the heat after a second major cover-up in just a matter of weeks. Tons of the chemical aniline from a coal plant has flowed into a river that has many concerned their health will be affected, and people are looking for one man to take the blame. Shanxi province authorities are taking the heat for a second major cover-up in a matter of weeks. On New Year's Eve, a chemical called aniline spilled into the Zhoujiang River from the Shanxi Tianji Coal Chemical Industry Group in Changzhou City. However, it was not reported by authorities until January 5th. Authorities in Shanxi province didn't inform authorities in Handan, a Hebei province city further downstream. People are now looking for someone to blame, and their gaze is pointing towards acting Shanxi governor and princeling Li Xiaopeng. Now Li Xiaopeng is the son of former Chinese premier Li Peng. Many people believe Li Xiaopeng directly covered up the spill. It has Handan City residents up at arms. It should have promptly notified us. It's a bit late after four to five days. This is a matter of life and health, right? As a result, Handan's water supply was adversely affected. People rushed to buy bottled water, fearing to drink tap water, and stores are now completely sold out. People say their health is still a major concern. Some people say the water isn't good enough to drink yet. Before the water was shut off, I did not know, including many in our unit. I am sure many drank the contaminated water during those days. Do you worry about your own health now? Yes, I do. I do not know the specifics, but I am certain something chronic, like slow poisoning, is taking place in my body. I would like to go to the hospital for a checkup. Changzhou City News Office Director Wang Yiping said, quote, If the pollution is not beyond the Changzhou border, it does not need to be reported to the provincial office. We can take care of it ourselves. However, villagers say no one informed them of the leakage. They only saw a written notice saying people and animals are prohibited from drinking river waste water on January 5th. Li Xiaopeng is also taking the heat for allegedly covering up an explosion in a tunnel in Lifen that killed at least eight workers. Authorities only confirmed that incident after repeated calls for information on the internet. 
Air pollution killed more than 8,500 people across four Chinese cities in 2012, according to a joint study by Peking University and Greenpeace. Air pollution was also responsible for $1.08 billion in economic losses. The report, published on December 18, studied the effects of PM2.5 air pollution in Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou and Xi'an. These are the four major cities in China's north, east, south and western regions. The research concludes that if these cities lower their PM2.5 pollution levels to meet guidelines issued by the World Health Organization, such deaths would be reduced by at least 81 percent. Economic losses could be reduced by more than $850 million. PM2.5 refers to particulate matter smaller than 2.5 micrometers in diameter. When inhaled, these particles can enter the bloodstream, leading to heart, brain and lung disease, including cancer. Studies show that most PM2.5 is created by the combustion of coal. The majority of China's energy comes from coal burning. Greenpeace is calling for a, quote, urgent policy adjustment by Chinese authorities to cap regional coal consumption. It also wants existing coal-fired power plants to be retrofitted with nitrogen oxide scrubbers. South Korean pop sensation Psy draws a massive crowd wherever he goes. In China's northern Heilongjiang province, Psy has made a rather icy appearance at the annual Ice and Snow Festival in Harbin. Harbin City, a northeastern Chinese city in Heilongjiang province, is celebrating its annual Ice and Snow Festival. The festival is famous for its ice sculptures, and one sculpture this year is going Gangnam style in sub-zero temperatures. K-pop star Psy became an international hit when he released his famous YouTube video Gangnam Style this July. Now people all over the world are mimicking his crazy horse moves and absurd dances. 20-year-old college student Yuan Wenyang says he thinks the statue is having a good effect on the crowd. The beat is quite crazy, making people feel enthusiastic in this ice city, a place with temperatures below minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. The statue is enough to spark people's passion and make them feel warm and enthusiastic. This sculpture of Sai in China's Harbin city is just one of the many carved at this year's Harbin Ice and Snow Festival. 47 sculptors from seven countries are taking part in the festival's annual ice carving contest. Working in sub-zero temperatures for three days, each sculptor carves a solid two and a quarter ton block of ice. Zhang Jinan from Harbin won first prize last year. It's really hard this year because of the weather. It's much colder than the previous years. The ice is more fragile and the tools have to be very sharp or we can't sculpt it. State-run Chinese media say the ice festival attracted 13.9 million visitors last year and even more are expected this year. And that's all for this broadcast of NTD China News. For more on China-related topics, visit our website at ntd.tv or subscribe to our new YouTube channel, NTD on China, where you'll find all of NTD's China content. Coming up next is China Focus. Shelly Zhang speaks with NTD's senior China analysts about the new pressure facing Western reporters working in China. Stay tuned.